Okay, so today we're gonna cover chapter nine, section one. This will be day two of the Pythagorean theorem. So we're gonna finish up the notes today. So we already talked about what the Pythagorean theorem was. It was a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Know that you can also apply this, um, be able to recognize some common Pythagorean triples. Here were some examples that we did yesterday. We applied it to a quadrilateral that diagonal of a rectangle is actually the hypotenuse of a right triangle. Then we did the rhombus, and remember the diagonals of a rhombus are perpendicular. So then that formed four little right triangles, and then the hypotenuse was the side of the rhombus. And then here is where we left off. So we're gonna go ahead, and it wants us to find the value of x. If you notice here, this is actually an isosceles triangle. So here, notice the two sides here, they're both labeled as X. So this is actually a large isosceles triangle. Remember, whenever you have an isosceles triangle, this segment that goes down the middle here, this is actually the altitude. It's also the median and it's also a perpendicular bisector. So all three of these special segments of a triangle that we talked about, when it's inside an isosceles triangle, it's all three, that segment going down there. Now here it just wants us to find the value of X. So notice this side of the triangle here, this whole length is six. So here, what we can see here is this would split it since it's a, a median splits it into two congruent pieces here. So now what I can work with is just one side of this triangle. I can pull it off. And then this is six, this was three. Notice this is the side across from the right angle. So this X is actually the C in my formula, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So let me go ahead and plug in the numbers. So three squared plus six squared. It doesn't matter if you would have said the three is A and this or B, it doesn't matter because these are the legs and you can switch those up. So then I get nine plus 36. I'm gonna add them, I get 45. Remember, we don't want just X squared, we want X, so we gotta square root it. So remember, we need to do a factor tree here because we need to leave this exact. So if I do a factor tree, nine times five, and then I can, if you wanna keep breaking it down till it's prime, you got a pair of threes here, three comes out, and then the five stays underneath. So leaving your answer exact is gonna be three square root five. However, if it says round it, and let's say it says round, Okay, so if it says to leave it exact, you're leaving it in simplest radical form. However, if it says round, say for example, to the tenths place, this is where you're gonna use your calculator. And we're gonna go ahead and find the square root of 45. And once you do that on your calculator, the square root of 45 is equal to 6.7082039321. Rounded to the tenths place, the seven looks at the zero, so it stays at a seven. So this would be the answer if it says to round it. So again, just read the questions carefully. If this were a quiz question for next week, then I want it in simplest radical form, so you're gonna leave it exact. Next, we're gonna learn the converse of the Pythagorean theorem. So the converse of the Pythagorean theorem states, that if the square of the longest side of a triangle is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides, then the triangle is a right triangle. So here, they're gonna give you three numbers and we need to test to see, does A squared plus B squared equal C squared? If it does, then our triangle is a right triangle. So you're gonna be adding and subtracting the two smaller numbers so let's say I give you the numbers three, four, five. 
Now we already know this is a common triple, so we know it's gonna be a right triangle, but you're gonna be given three numbers. You need to know that the largest number is gonna be your C, so it doesn't matter if you just wanna do it in order A, B, C. We're gonna plug these three numbers into the Pythagorean theorem, and when I square A and square B, if it equals C squared, then I'm gonna say it's a right triangle. So once I square everything and then add these two together, because 25 equals 25 and it satisfies the Pythagorean theorem, I will say yes, this is a right triangle. So you're gonna get three numbers where they're not gonna equal the C squared and then it's not gonna be a right triangle. Now, when the three numbers they give you, if they're integers, then, and it satisfies, and you get a true statement like this, then these three numbers are a Pythagorean triple. If it were 3.1, if any of them are a decimal or a 5.2, if any of the numbers were a decimal, then they're not a Pythagorean triple. Okay, so a Pythagorean triple, the three numbers have to be integers. So remember, a converse, it just switched the order of our if and then of our Pythagorean theorem. Let's try the Pythagorean inequality theorem, which is the next slide. This is gonna help us to determine if our triangle is acute or obtuse. So for the Pythagorean inequality theorem, this one states that if the square of the longest side, that hypotenuse, is less than the sum of the squares of the other two sides, then the triangle is acute. So when a squared plus b squared equals c squared, it's right. But when a squared plus b squared, when that number is bigger than c squared, then it's acute. Now, questions like this on the quiz, everybody's gonna think backwards. So make sure you remember that when c squared is smaller, it's acute. The next slide is when c squared is bigger, it's gonna be obtuse. So for example, let's say I give you a set of three numbers. Let's say I gave you the numbers 10, 11, and 14. Now, the first thing they're gonna ask you, will these three numbers actually form a triangle? So if you remember back to another lesson, remember you always would have had to take the two smaller numbers and you're gonna add them and subtract them and if that bit other third side, the biggest side is a number in between, then it forms a triangle. So you would do 11 minus 10 and 11 plus 10. This gives you one, this gives you 21. So because 14 is in between one and 21, these numbers will form a triangle. Now we have to figure out what kind of triangle it is. So now I'm going to take the 10, 11, and 14, and square them all. And again, I could just do this in order. Remember, the C has to be the biggest. So I'm gonna do 10 squared plus 11 squared. I'm just gonna leave a blank here because I don't know if it's gonna be equal, less, or greater. Now, if you'd rather, let's do it the way that they wrote it there. Let's do it with 14 squared. Let's do it how they wrote it here in the theorem. It really doesn't matter. I think this is where everybody gets confused because you're so used to seeing it as a squared plus b squared equals c squared. But the way that they present it here is they put the c squared first. I'm gonna leave a blank line because I don't know if it's gonna be a less than yet. And then 10 squared, 11 squared. So 14 squared is 196. And again, you're using your calculator. You can do 14 times 14 or also um, find the button that will square it. It's actually on that left column. You can also use the up arrow on your calculator and I can show you where these buttons are. Or just do 14 times 14, and then 10 times 10, 11 times 11, 196, and then I'm gonna add 100 plus 121, and I get 221. So here I can see that 196 is less than 221. So because C squared is less than A squared plus B squared, this triangle is an acute triangle. 
So when C squared is smaller than A squared plus B squared, it's a Q. The next one, we're gonna reverse the inequality sign. And when C squared's larger, it's gonna be obtuse. So here's this one. Okay, so here it says, it's still it's called the Pythagorean inequality theorem, but this one says if the square of the longest side of the triangle is greater than the sum of the squares of the other two sides, then the triangle is an obtuse triangle. So let's try some numbers here. So let's say I gave you the three numbers, 15, 20, and 26. You first need to double check that it will form a triangle. So you would do 20 minus 15, take the two smaller numbers, add and subtract them, and this gives you five, this gives you 35. So because 26 is in between five and 35, this will form a triangle. So now I'm gonna take the 26, the biggest number, I'm gonna leave a little blank space here for my symbol, what's gonna go in there, and then do 15 squared plus 20 squared. 26 squared is uh, 676, 15 squared is 225, and 20 squared is 400. I'm gonna add the 225 and the 400. And here, the symbol that's gonna go in between here, because this was still a question mark, now that I've added them, I can see that C squared is bigger. So when C squared is the bigger number or greater than a squared plus b squared, then the triangle is obtuse. All right, so here it wants to know, the sides of the triangle have lengths given. Is the triangle acute, right, or obtuse? So just to show you, if, it, if the question would have said, will these sides form a triangle? And if they will, what type of triangle is it? So again, to check to see what kind of triangle it is, or if it does form a triangle, we would take the two smaller sides. So notice these two, both of the smaller numbers are the same. So for part A and B here, I'm gonna subtract 21 and 20 and add 21 and 20. And once I add them, I get, or subtract them, I get one. When I add them, I get 41. So because 29 is in between here, and so is 30, these are both good, they will form a triangle. I'll do the same thing on C. I need to add and subtract the two smaller numbers. So six minus five, six plus five, one and 11. So because eight is in between there, this is also gonna be able to form a triangle. And then when I do part D, I'm gonna take the two smaller numbers. Now, for the four square root three, you should do that on your calculator to see if it is the smaller number. So the four times the square root of three, if you do that on your calculator, this number here, four square root of three, is approximately equal to 6.9. So the two smaller numbers here are these two. So you could approximate it. You could do 6.9 minus four and 6.9 plus four. This will give you 2.9 and this gives you 10.9. So because eight is in between, this will also form a triangle. And then the last one, if you do the square root of 10 on your calculator, the square root of 10 is about 3.16. So the square root of 10 is gonna be the C when we do it. So if I add and subtract them, if I do one plus three and one minus three, actually subtract them in order, let me do it this way. Uh, three minus one, three plus one, I get two and four. And because 3.16 is in between, these are all good sides of a triangle. Now I just have to figure out what type of triangle A, B, C, D, and E are by squaring them and then comparing the C squared value. So let's go ahead and try part A. So for part A, 
what we're going to do is take c squared, the biggest number. And again, I'm going to put a little question mark here because I don't know what symbol is going to go in here yet. And then I'm going to square 20 and 21. I'm going to add 20 squared. 21 squared is 441. And then 29 squared is 841. So now I got to add these two. I get 841. Since 841 equals 841, this triangle is a right triangle. Fun fact for 21 squared or 21 times 21, this is just a side thing. If you know that 12 squared is 144, if you reverse the numbers and make it a 21, then you also reverse the answer and make it 441. Just a little fun fact. Okay, so let's go on to part B. So for part B, the numbers were 30 is the C squared, the biggest. I don't know what symbol's going in here yet. And then I'm gonna do 20 squared plus 21 squared again. Well, I already did that on the previous problem. It's 400 and 441, so 841. 30 squared, three times three is nine, and then add the two zeros. So then now I'm comparing 900 and 841. 900 is greater, so C squared is bigger. So this means that the triangle is obtuse. For part C, we're gonna again take the biggest number, the eight. I don't know the symbol yet. And then I'll fill in the five squared and the six squared. Eight squared is 64. Don't know the symbol. Five squared, 25, six squared, 36. Have to add 25 and 36, I get 61. So again, the C squared is bigger. So C squared is bigger again. So the triangle is obtuse. For part D, my numbers are eight, so I'll square the eight. Again, I don't know the symbol. And then four square root three squared plus eight squared. So remember, this one will become 64. For the four square root three squared, Remember, you can do this. Multiply the two outsides together, you get 16. You got a pair of square root threes, so that just comes out. So this answer is 48. So we get 48. And then we're gonna put 16, or not 16, uh, did I write the right thing here? No, this should have been a four. Oh, let's go back. This is four squared. The biggest one was eight. So four squared is 16. 16 plus 48 is 64. 64 equals 64. So this triangle is a right triangle because a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And then the last example, again, remember we found that uh, the square root of 10 was the biggest number. So for E, we're gonna do the square root of 10, that's our C, and we're gonna square it. Equals, no, not equals, we don't know yet. Put a question mark. And then we're gonna do one squared plus three squared. When you square a radical here, squaring this is just gonna cancel the radical and then we're just left with 10. Again, I don't know the symbol. One squared is one, three squared is nine, and then one plus nine is 10. 10 equals 10, and we've got another right triangle because a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Now, out of all of these, the only one that is a Pythagorean triple 
is A. Okay, so A is a Pythagorean triple because all three numbers are integers. Notice the other questions like D and E, they were right triangles, but the sides of the triangle were not integers. On D and E, they were actually radicals. So a Pythagorean triple cannot have a decimal or a square root in it. And then your last slide here, the first one is the converse where if a squared plus b squared equals c squared, it's a right triangle. The middle one is when c squared is smaller than a squared plus b squared, then it's a q. And then the last one, when c squared is greater than a squared plus b squared, then we know it's an obtuse triangle. So this is the end of 9-1, and you have your homework on big ideas. When you're doing the homework, make sure you read the instructions. If the instructions say leave answer exact, I want simplest radical form. If it doesn't specify, then you're gonna round to the tenths place. Or if it says a different place, round to that place. Also, when you're doing your homework, you need to show the work. You need to show me how you're plugging the numbers into the Pythagorean theorem. You don't have to show me the multiplication because you're using a calculator, but I do need to see how you're plugging the numbers in to the formula and solving it algebraically.